Hello and welcome to Last Date in a Column. My name is Jeff, I'm glad you're here. Let's just jump right in. I was recently asked the following question. Each month I add rows to my data. How can I get the last value in my date column? And I'm gonna answer that in this video. Exercise one. In this first exercise, we're gonna assume the data is stored in a table. In the next exercise, we're gonna assume that it's not in a table. If it's in a table, our job is pretty easy. Depending on our version of Excel, one option is to use the take function. And here we can say, from this column, take the which row. If we use one, it would be the first row, two is the second row, three is the third row. If we use minus, it goes from the bottom, so minus one would be the last row. Close function and enter. And that returns the last date in this date column. If our version of Excel doesn't have the take function, we can use the index and rows functions. So here's how this works, equals index. So the first argument is the array. That's just the range we want to return the value from. And here is our date column. Comma, the second argument is the row number. In this case, we're gonna ask the rows function to figure out how many rows are in this table at any given time. Close the rows function, close the index function, and enter. And now if we add a new value here, like January 1st, 2030, both of these functions return the last date in that date column. But what if our data is not stored in a table? Well, that takes us to the next exercise, exercise two. Here we'll use the index function again, along with the match function. So here's what that looks like. Equals index, we wanna return a value from this column, comma, and which row? We'll ask the match function to figure that out. We wanna match a zero, comma, in this range, comma, and we're gonna use the greater than, which is minus one. Close the match function, close the index function, and enter. And this returns the last date in this column. So if we went one, one, 20, 30, it returns that. And even if we skip a couple rows, let's go with 12, 31, 20, 30, it returns the last date in that column. Now it's important to realize that that returns the last date value, but there are other options. So depending on what you're working on, I wanna show a couple of other options in the next exercise. Exercise three. Now what if we don't wanna get the very last cell in the date column? What if instead we wanted to show the range of dates that are in this data? For example, the minimum or earliest date and the maximum or latest date. To do that, we can go equals min of this column close function and enter, and to get the largest date, it's equals max of this column, close function and enter. And now we can see that these transactions are from January 17th to December 18th. And those are a couple functions that can help us get the latest date and then also the date range from a column of dates. Thanks for joining me, have a great day. Hey Excel user, if you ever need to create summary reports, check out my pivot table for beginners video. It starts at the beginning and shows how to store the data transactions in a table and then how to summarize those transactions with a pivot table report. I hope it helps unlock the incredible power of pivot tables. This video is a production of Excel University.